Sorry, my camera took a little bit to come on there. All right, today we're going to go into a little bit of conspiracy theory stuff. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't always a, a conspiracy theory kind of guy, and I still don't really consider myself a conspiracy theory kind of guy. But I want to take you back to how the crime of the century was covered up by the crime of the century. Uh, it was, I think, probably mid-2000 when the Enron scandal broke. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with this Enron scandal, it, it was basically this big uh, energy company that was basically cooking their books and using their uh, stock profile to to give false projections of projected income for their stock causing their stock to go on the rise on the stock market now I'm, I'm not a real savvy stock market kinda guy I don't know much about it but basically they were manipulating stocks and they were doing it illegally and it cost a lot of people a lot of money and there was an investigation and and a couple of a couple of the higher-ups were actually prosecuted and convicted of, of uh, I think it was insider trading I'm not sure but this this is what I'm getting at the whole Enron scandal was forgotten shortly after this and you probably know why um, September of 2001 there was there was two major stories in the headlines the Enron scandal was one and and I'm, I'm basing all this off of my own memory the other big one that I remember was there was a, a rash of shark attacks in Florida um, those, those were the two major stories that I remember. It seemed like every other week there was a shark attack, and the news was just always covering shark attacks and Enron. Those were the big things. Then all of a sudden, these planes fly into the World Trade Center and the Pentagon, and ever since then, everybody has forgotten completely about Enron. They've probably forgotten about the sharks, too. I'm sure shark attacks still go on. Excuse me just for a moment here. I'm trying to quit smoking and oh dude, this thing has been a godsend. Anyways. So the Enron scandal was was pretty much forgotten and, and you know if you ask these millennials today what what the Enron scandal was, they'll have no clue. A lot of them don't even have a clue what what actually happened at the World Trade Center. And to be perfectly honest, I don't think anybody will ever really know what happened with the World Trade Center. Um, there are a lot of conspiracy theories out there, but I remember watching this, and I'll take you back to, to how this happened from me, my personal experience with it. I was unemployed at the time, and um, my, my girlfriend at the time who lived with me had called me and and said, because she was at work, of course, called me, uh, I want to say, probably shortly after 8 in Arizona. I'm not sure what time that would have been in New York. But in, in the terms of it all, it was within five minutes after the first plane hit the World Trade Center. So she called me and let me know about this. And she was concerned because she... She worked in a, in a corporate high-rise building and wanted my advice of what to do. And I, I basically told her, go with your gut instinct. If your gut's telling you to, to get out of there and go home or go someplace safe, we're going to do that. And, and of course, even, even there, security was saying, no, it's all clear. Everybody's safe here. And that's something that was going on at the World Trade Center, too. And, and, and 
the the second building. I, I'm not sure the designations. I'm not sure if World Trade Center one or World Trade Center two was hit first. But the point is, is the opposite building. Security was telling everybody, no, go back to your to your workstations. Everything's fine. This building's secure. Now, from a security standpoint, I I can kind of see that. But at the same time, I wouldn't impose that upon somebody. Um, I would I would encourage that. Okay, we we are safe. There's no damage to this building. Um, but if somebody wanted to leave, that they felt that their safety was in jeopardy, of course I would not stand in anybody's way. Um, and it's my understanding that security was refusing to let people out and that goes into another security issue because there's a lot of people in these buildings and when you have all these people evacuating at the same time plus emergency personnel responding to an, another emergency at the same location it causes a congestion so I can see both sides of the security standpoint on this. Anyways, for me, you know, I got that call and I immediately turned on the TV. And shortly after I turned it on, I saw the live happenings where the second plane had crashed into the World Trade Center. Um, I'm I don't remember if the Pentagon was hit before that or after that. I, I want to say, based on my memory, and you got to remember, this this is an old memory for me, um, so my recollection is not perfect. I, I want to say that I, I think that world the second plane hit the other World Trade Center and then the Pentagon was hit. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, once, once I saw the the second plane hit, I knew that this was this was a deliberate attack. the The first one, you know, the the report, I was like, that's a tragic accident. You know, just just like I think George Bush had said, you know, it it seemed to be uh, uh, an accident and a disaster that's what everybody wanted to believe but when when that second plane hit we knew that these were targets and then when when uh, when the Pentagon was struck too it became very very clear that we were under attack um, now this this is where the conspiracy theory gets kind of weird because if if a bunch of people in caves or, or terrorists who are relatively unsophisticated in technology, um, a, a very low level of training and operating and maneuvering aircraft, if they could pull this attack off, it, it, it just... That, that just kind of blows my mind, you know, because America is one of the most well-protected countries in the world. And that's as the country as a whole. Now, you're talking about the Pentagon, the most secure location in probably the world. And cavemen were able to fly an airplane That just, you know, and the whole thing with the, there, there was a training exercise going on at the same time as this, where they were actually training for this type of event. Um, there's, there's so many coincidences, and, you know, I'm not a physics expert either, but I, I did take, uh, some courses in high school aviation science was the name of the course and I mean anybody can tell you that a 
passenger plane of that size, I believe it was a 747 or a 737, I'm not sure. Passenger planes at that size cannot fly at the speeds projected at low altitude like that. They're designed for, you know, they can they can fly at those speeds above 10,000, between 10,000 and 30,000 feet. But once they get as low as these planes were, the, the, the superstructure of, of the craft cannot withstand the, uh, oh, I'm not sure what the term is. Um, basically, if you've ever experienced turbulence, you know that the, the plane violently shakes. Well, the lower you go and the faster you go, those turbulence, they're not called turbulence, but it will literally shake the plane apart. The wings on these planes should have folded and crumbled off of the plane. Um, you know, and, and I've witnessed this with my own eyes on TV, of course. Like, you can believe everything you see on TV, though. Um, but it, it seemed genuine to me. And I remember watching, because I, I watched the, the news the rest of the day. Um, and I remember watching as Building 5 collapsed, and they were announcing that it was going to collapse before it ever did. Um... It, it all just seemed really odd. Now here's here's where this really gets weird because Building Five was. I mean, a lot of people don't understand the importance of Building Five, but this goes back to the Enron thing. Building Five stored all of the evidence for the Enron scandal for future cases. All of that evidence was stored there. And bear in mind, no plane hit Building 5. I believe some debris from the, build, from the plane that hit one of the Trade Center buildings caused some fires inside of Building 5. But those fires should have been manageable. Um, even if fire personnel were not able to get to it, which, which brings me to another point, because never in history has a high-rise building ever collapsed due to fire until September, September 11th, 2001. And on that day, three collapsed. Okay. Now, the other weird coincidence is the... Uh, The building, the the um, Pentagon, the area that it was that was hit was, I, I believe that one was already partially evacuated because there was con some construction going on there or some construction that had just been completed there, so that area was not operating at full capacity. Um, however. There was uh, there was some some information that was stored in that area that had to do with some sixteen billion dollars worth of uh, government money that they were trying to figure out where this money went because that that was another big event or a big news thing that was going on at the time was you know what happened to this 16 million dollars that was budgeted here but we don't know whatever happened to it basically there there was a financial discrepancy and all the all the the evidence and the research that they had concluded was in that area so you know my, my final conclusion on this, and I'm trying to keep this video short, and I've already gone over what I wanted to, but my, my final conclusion is, you know, if, if the events that transpired actually transpired the way the media and the government wants us to believe it, it did, 
then that should really scare a lot of people because America and the Pentagon are the most protected secure locations on the planet and for somebody to pull something off this easily it, you know trust the government they'll keep you safe who, who exactly did they keep safe on September 11th 2001 they kept Enron safe they kept their own asses safe from prosecution for losing 16 million dollars um, and they protected themselves plus this also kicked off the invasion of Iraq which let's let's go into that a little Iraq had nothing absolutely nothing to do with this there there was no evidence at all that Iraq had anything to do with this but one of our first targets was Iraq because of course there's weapons of mass destruction there which of course they never found um, probably because there are none um, but that, you know, and, and everybody jumped on that pattern wagon, including myself. Uh, that's the day that I became a patriot. And, and it's sad because I kind of feel like I was duped. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure that I believe the narrative the way it went down. It's my belief that the government had to have something to do with this. Um. I, I don't want to believe that a couple of cavemen can pull something off like this against one of the most secure countries in America, in, in the world, I'm sorry. Um, it, it just, it's mind-boggling to think that. And, and it's my belief that the government did have something to do with it. And this is where I go back to, trust the government and give us your guns, we'll keep you safe. Don't give up your guns, people. There's going to come a day where we're going to have to rise up against tyranny, and we're going to need that firepower. And uh, I could go into more about, you know, what I think about fighting tyranny, but I'll probably get my whole channel deleted if I <laughs> stated some of the things I wanted to say. Anyways, that's today's Jacketed Hollow Points and my personal opinion. If I offended anybody, well, suck it up, buttercup. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.